Assalamu namaste and ayoba one. Welcome to Lindell Speaks podcast and I am your host Dania Dawood with my co-host Yanjo Kosivia from Linda Secondary College in the city of Greater Dandenong Melbourne Victoria. The honorable member Julian Hill joins us here today as a federal politician currently serving as a member of parliament for Bruce representing the Labour Party in the House of Representatives holding both a very impressive Bachelor of Law and Bachelor of Science at Monash University and on top of that a graduate certificate in international relations at Deakin University, MP Hill is the chair of both the Joint Committee of Public Accountants and Audit, as well as the Select Committee on Workforce Australia Employment Services. Welcome, Honourable Member. It is lovely to have you here in the studio with us this morning. Uh, so we would join you this morning as you were answering some of our questions uh, from our VCE legal classes, which personally I found your responses very interesting and I enjoyed them very much. And we just wanted um, our viewers here today to hear some of your uh, thoughts and opinions. And so our first question is, how did you find the morning session with our students? Yeah, I found it absolutely terrific. And the questions were engaging. Uh, and as I said to them, one of the things in this job is you spend far too much time with grumpy old people and not enough time hearing from young people about what's important for your current lives and for the future concerns, hopes, dreams for the future of Australia and your lives. So it was energising for me to start the day by engaging with such a bright group of students, the legal study students from year 11 and 12, um, and to be challenged by many of the questions. So it's been terrific. Thank you. Oh, good. Um, me being a um, legal study student, um, I really enjoyed um, your answers to the questions and you're very passionate about, you know, um, the voices that the youth and their ideas must be heard in Parliament and all that. My second question to you is, what does this visit mean to you? Well, it's a chance to be back here at Lindale. I haven't been here for two or three years because of the pandemic, and I think we met, you said, in Year 8 when we yeah. were here for Science Week. Um, so it's a terrific opportunity to see the new school facilities and see how much the school has grown and developed, which is, uh, which is great. Uh, but as I said, to hear directly from young people about... Um, your views about our system of government, uh, what questions you have about my role and what happens in the parliament, but also I, I hope to give a little bit more confidence about the future of our democracy. Democracy across the world is under attack and we can't take it for granted. Right now, in countries across the world, particularly in places like Afghanistan, uh, in parts of Africa, democracy is under threat. People are literally fighting and dying for that right that we have to simply vote and choose our government. Um, we've had populist idiots like Clive Palmer um, spreading misinformation and pouring hundreds of millions of dollars to create cynicism and reduce trust in our democracy. So turning up and actually talking directly to people, I think, is so important uh, for the future of our country that I hear directly from what young people, uh, from young people about what they're thinking and feeling and that they have the opportunity to hear directly from me and hopefully give a little bit uh, more confidence and trust uh, in our democracy. Yeah. Um, my qu second question, oh, third question, sorry, <laughs> to you is, what did you know, do you, did you know that politics um, was for you? Probably when I was 15 or 16, I realised uh, I was a weird kid. I always read the foreign affairs pages before the sports pages. I've always been fascinated in the world, mm -hmm. where Australia fits in the world, how other countries are different, how we relate to each other. And... Um, who in our society wins and loses? Why some people seem to get things, why some decisions are made, some people benefit, some don't. So I've always been interested, I suppose, in politics. Um, that said, I didn't understand anything about party politics. I knew that I was passionate about the environment um, back when I was a kid. I was really pro-women's equality. I was raised by a single mum after my dad died, and I've always thought that women... Um, are equal. Female authority figures are normal to someone raised by a single mum because they're in charge. 
Uh, so I'd never really related, though, the things that I believed in and thought about the future of the world to party politics. So when I went to university, I actually probably thought I was a Liberal voter because my mum, weirdly, was a Liberal voter. No one understood why everyone else in the family voted Labor, but, you know, we kind of put up with that. Um, but then in my first year at uni, as I got to meet people and be exposed to more ideas, I realised actually all the things I believed in related to the progressive, to the Labor side of politics, the idea of a fairer society, of caring about other people, of working together um, to improve our country for the future, things like now action on climate change, affordable housing, um, the idea that the brightest kids from the poorest families should be able to go to university if they want to and fulfil their life potential, um, whether or not they can afford to pay for it, that society should help them. They're things which I realise the Labor Party believed in. So I've always been interested in politics. Politics affects everyone. You don't have to do it all day. Most people don't. Uh, but above all else, I really encourage young people just to take an interest, even if before it's election, spending half an hour thinking about where our country's at, where our state's at, what you believe, what's important to you, and having an informed view. And the final thing I'd say is that if you're a young person whose values are clear and align with one political party or another, um, I'd argue parties of government because you change our country for the better, you change our state for the better through being in government, I believe through Labor governments. Uh, but if you're a person who's very conservative and supports the conservative side of politics, whatever your beliefs are, if you've got them, join a political party, get involved. Political parties perform a fundamentally important role in our democracy and are in a public good and they rely on citizens being active. Democracy is not a spectator sport. We can't just have everyone sit on the sidelines and think our democracy will function. It actually needs people who care, who have values, to get off the couch and put a little bit of time in and get involved. So that's a key message to all young people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so our next question was, if you were to give advice to high school Julian, what would it be? Take a gap year. Um, that, that's, what, that's my one regret that I wish in many ways that I'd taken a year um, in either between high school and uni in those first couple of years and spent more time traveling. I've yeah. always loved traveling and experiencing other cultures. And uh, my daughter, when she was in year 12, uh, came to me one day and she said, oh, I've been thinking dad next year, I want to take a gap year. And I said, oh yeah, that's fine darling. And she said, oh, really? I said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. She said, oh, I thought you'd say no. I said, no, 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 that's fine. But three conditions, if you want to travel, get a job, save some money, and then go overseas, um, you're going to come back and go to university or TAFE or something, otherwise there will be punishment. I don't care what you do, I don't care what you want to study, you do what you're interested in in life, but you've got to do something. And that's a message to every young person now, increasingly for your future, to succeed in the world and contribute to our country, you're going to need some kind of post-school education. Not always one thing, we can learn throughout life, uh, but whatever you're interested in, you need to do something. And I said, and don't come home with grandkids, you're too young. So those three things, <laughs> those three things, if you meet those requirements, have a gap year. So in some ways, I wish I'd done that. Nice. nice. Okay. So we have three um, rapid fire questions for you. Okay, ready. So the first one is describe your job in three words. Hmm. Equally disappointing everyone. Some days success <laughs> feels like that because there's so many demands on our elected representatives that you can't meet them all. You can't make everyone happy. And some days at the end of a very long day, I was up at 5am this morning doing emails, helping people. I'm very upset about a particular refugee visa case at the moment that I've been trying to work on. So I wrote a pretty firm letter. Um, and some days at the end of the day, you think, oh, I, I've really just disappointed everyone. You can't make everyone happy. But look, in all seriousness, jokes aside, um, I'd probably say to advocate uh, on behalf of people uh, to... Um, uh, to to legislate uh, and I've got to pick a third word. So advocate, legislate and uh, cogitate. No, I'm cogitating on that. I'll come back to that. Next. If you could be a Prime Minister right now, um, what would you be the first thing you would like to change? If I could be the Prime Minister right now, I don't want to be the Prime Minister, just for the record. I think it would be a terrible job. A lot of us, <laughs> just, just a terrible job. Um, I'm really pleased that we've got Elbow elected as a Prime Minister. I've known him for 26 years. He's just a terrific human being, grew up in public housing with a single mum. He knows what real life is like and he's going to do great things for our country. Uh, I think one of the most important um, things to resolve for 
your generation and for the future of humanity is actually the climate change challenge. But that doesn't have to be all negative. So I think that's, um, that's one of the changes I'd like to see that we really push our country as the new Labor government starting to do, to take serious action on climate change and for Australia to seize the opportunities, the economic opportunities and the jobs that are going to come for people your age from real action on climate change. Australia has more to gain from renewable energy than any developed country in the world. We've got better solar resources, better wind resources. If we can harness those opportunities, we can create new industries and new jobs in Australia um, so that your generation have a better standard of living. And we're at risk of handing on you being the first generation in modern Australian history to have a lower standard of living than those that came before you, and that's a disgrace. So we've got to turn that around. Yeah. yeah. Last and final question, what are your top three priorities right now in your professional role? Uh, my top three priorities are, I would say, on a local level, to really continue to advocate to fix the visa processing system. We're the most multicultural part of Australia. Being able to get visas for your family members to come and go and to be reunited with family as well as for skilled workers for business, is an absolute high priority. It's the most common issue that's raised with me and my electorate. Yeah. Um, the second issue I'm looking at at the moment is, as you mentioned in the introduction, I'm chairing an important parliamentary committee looking at employment services, Workforce Australia. Uh, we spend over a billion dollars a year as a country on employment services, and we really need to have a good look at um, how well they're going getting people jobs. We've got hundreds of thousands of long-term unemployed people in Australia yet a whole lot of jobs that can't be filled. And so there's something that's not right. There's something that's not right about the system, so I'm looking at that. And the third thing I'd say is I'm uh, reflecting and working hard on the Defence Subcommittee, which I also chair, uh, having a think about our future national security needs um, in, a w in a world that's changing rapidly um, across, across the region. And we're going to need to invest more and invest smarter and quicker in our defence capability. Yeah. Some very important priorities and it's very reassuring as youth to hear that someone or there are, there's a group of uh, people in federal politics that are interested in our future in terms of climate change and the other um, issues that you've mentioned. All right, so to all of our listeners, thank you for joining us today at Linda Speaks Podcast and many thanks to our very special guest, MP Julian Hill, for chatting with us here in our studio. We look forward to having you back again next time. This is Linda Speaks Podcast, Empowering Student Voice. Have a nice day. Thanks so much.